Sister Johnson is a Sun Devil graduate, marathon runner, pro kitchen party dancer, recipe entrepreneur, llama race blue ribbon winner, animal head paper mache creator, and a bow and boot connoisseur. She has been a representative at the UN and a clinic worker in Ethiopia. Now? Woo! Okay. Woo! Hi, ladies. I'm Ashley Johnson. As we all know, we partied last night. Um, so excited to be here with you guys. And um, today I'm talking about Be Your Own Little Miss Sunshine. Yeah. Okay. So when I came up with this idea of the topic, it wasn't 115 degrees outside, so it sounded like a cooler idea. But it can still be cool to be a happy ray of sunshine when it's hot out. Let's see if this works. Woo! Okay, it does. So the first thing we can do to be our own little Miss Sunshine is to be a happy ray of sunshine in our own lives. And here's my cheat sheet. Okay, so we're talking about being happy. Anybody here happy? Yeah. Okay. Now, are we always happy all the time? No. no. Does happy just happen? Sometimes it doesn't, right? And sometimes, some people think that happiness is kind of like a weather forecast, like, today it's going to be cloudy. Sorry, guys, no happiness. Like, that's not how it works. Happiness is a choice. So every day, we get to choose to be happy. Sound good? OK. So because Heavenly Father, he says that men are, so we're going to say ladies, because we're all ladies here, except for my dad. Hi, dad. <laughs> he says that men are, ladies are that they might have joy. Now, when he said that, did he know that we would have bad hair days? Did he know that sometimes there's like earthquakes places or sometimes that families don't stay together or sometimes we have zits on our forehead when we're talking in front of a lot of people? Yeah, he does. But he says that we're to have joy and be happy. Jesus says, be of good cheer. So it's like a commandment to be happy, okay? And so there's a few things that we can do to be happy. The easiest one is to smile. Yeah, we're all going to practice. Ready, set, go. Ooh, nice. Okay, and our brains are really funny because we can trick ourselves into being happy. And um, because our brains believe anything we tell them. So if we're saying, this is the worst day ever, it's probably going to be. Right? If we say it's going to be the best day ever, it's going to be. So if we are, so if you just smile, like your brain goes, oh my goodness, I'm smiling, I must be happy, and eventually you start feeling better and you're happier and it's a better day. So we can trick ourselves. The next one is, in case of a bad day, we should have backup happy thoughts. Whoa, right? So let's get three examples of a backup happy thought that you can have. Yes, right there. Yeah. You are beautiful. Yes. You're amazing at everything you do. And way over there. Your dog is at home waiting for you. Yeah. Okay. Or how about this one? We say it every week. How about we say it together? Ready? We are daughters of our Heavenly Father who loves us and we love Him. Okay? We say it every week. We should believe it. Okay? And if you don't, write it on your mirror and say it every day to yourself in the mornings. Or every time you look in the mirror, you should smile at yourself. I started taking up this practice because I need a little pep talk to myself too. And it's kind of funny because I walk in and go, yeah. You know, and it's silly, but I am happy with myself when I do that. And you too can be happy with yourself. 
forget what's next. Let's look, shall we? Okay, this is good. Okay, Ron Dahl says, think happy thoughts and they will shine from your face like sunbeams, okay? That's what we can be for, for every day, okay? Oh, we got to the Great Dane. Whoa, too soon. Okay, I'll go back. So, sometimes it's hard to be happy because we're unhappy with ourselves. Does anybody ever feel like that? Like, I could be happier if I was taller or if my hair was different or whatever. Or if I, whatever the thing is, we think it would be better if we were something else. So now we can talk about dogs. <laughs> okay. So this is the Great Dane. According to the American Kennel Association, and they're the official dog people of America, okay, um, they, the Great Dane is the largest breed. There's 117 different breeds of dog that they acknowledge. And they're all award-winning, and they all have something to offer, and they're all awesome, okay? So the Great Dane is the tallest, so like when it's standing on all fours like this, it's about, so all feet are on the ground, it's about four feet tall, which, you know, that's like here. Well, I'm in heels, so it's like here, okay? It's tall. And one of the smallest... This is the teacup Yorkie, which is tiny and adorable, okay? But do you guys think... Okay, it's adorable. We all agree. It's perfect and so cute, and we want to take it home in my pocket. Um, the teacup Yorkie, do you think it ever wakes up in the morning and goes, man, I wish I had legs like the Great Dane. Then... <laughs> Then I would be something, okay? Then my life would be better. Or the Great Dane goes, you know what? I would be so cute if I had those adorable ears, like the teacup. <laughs> Look, you'd be so tiny. You know? Then it would be, no, the dog is happy to be the dog because that's the way God made it. And God made all 117 different types of dogs. Now, would it have been easier to make one or 17? One, or 117, yeah. One, it would be way easier to make one. But he didn't. He made 117 award-winning dogs with different attributes and qualities. Okay? And God made the dogs, right? We're all in agreement with that. Nod your head. Okay? And God made us. He made us last. He said he made all of the earth, and then he made women. Because we were like crowning the creation, okay? That's us. So, if he took time to make 117 different dogs, do you think when he got around to us, he went, okay, I already made all the dogs. What's left for all of the girls? Let's see. Hmm. Like scraping the bottom of the barrel here. Do you think that's how it was? No. no. And do you think it would, there's about, they said there's about 200 of us, right? So, when he was making us, do you think it would have been easier to make one type of girl or 200 different types of girls? One. But he didn't, right? He made us all special and unique the way he wanted us to be. He said, Ashley, I love her, and I'm going to give her curly hair. Okay? Or he said he loves you, and he wanted you to have dark hair. He wanted you to have cute little ears and he want like he went through individually and he said you are my daughter and I love you and this is what I want to give to you and you can be happy in it because I'm blessing you with it so we're happy with ourselves and we can be a happy ray of sunshine because sisters we belong we are loved we are needed we have a divine purpose workplace and role in the church a kingdom of God and his eternal family and this is Carol Stevens the first counselor in the Relief Society General Presidency. So, she knows what she's talking about. So, if you want to give light to others, you have to glow yourselves because we are happy rays of sunshine, okay? Now, there are some times that we feel like maybe ourselves, we don't shine so bright, or maybe we're not worthy, or whatever we feel like it might be, don't worry. Elder Uchtdorf's got your back, okay? He says, I'm going to read it over here because it's easier for me. He says, 
with patience and persistence, even the smallest act of discipleship or the tiniest ember of belief can become a blazing bonfire of a consecrated life. In fact, this is the part we like. That's how most bonfires start, as a simple spark. So, if you feel that you're just a spark right now, don't worry that you too can be whatever you want, and you can be a blazing bonfire of faith, okay? Capiche? So, we need to be happy and be bright and be you, because you're the only you, so be the very best one, okay? And the Lord has given us some tools to help us be happy too. Mainly, scripture and prayer. And we're supposed to do it every day, every day, every day. If you want to be happy every day, read your scriptures and say your prayers. Okay? So, the next one, and go to the temple on a regular basis. The next one is, make plans and plan on being surprised. Let me see what my note tells me to say now. Okay, so... We need to live life, okay? It's a gift. We need to make plans. Anybody have any plans they want to do with themselves when they grow up? Any ideas of life? Let's get like three examples right there. Wow, she's got a plan, okay? She's going to graduate, go to college, get a bachelor's, go on a mission, and get married. Woo! Okay, next one. Become a mother. Woo! Yes. Okay, last one right here in front. Go to Harry Potter World. There you go. That's a plan. And you know what? Sometimes, for me, sometimes, you know, it can be hard to, we're supposed to dream big and make plans. And um, so about almost a year ago, I was kind of in a low spot in life, and I was feeling like having this like personal pity party of the world. I was like, I have no plans, I have no dreams, I have nothing to offer the world, and I'm like, I'm looking at the stars with my cute husband, and I'm like, tears are involved, and he's like, you have lots, you can, you got dreams, like I have nothing. And so we made up this funny game. And we called it unrealistic dreams and goals that we wanted to do. And once we called them unrealistic, it kind of gave us like permission to like think bigger and to like be silly. So I have them with me. So I thought I would share some with you because, you know, dream a little, be a little silly, it's okay. So, in case you needed some unrealistic dreams to work for, you could become a Disney princess. I want to, you know, be a roller derby babe. Yeah, I want to scuba dive in a coral reef or visit a cranberry bog and wear waders like on the cranberry juice commercial. That would be really cool. I want to write a book and be an EFY speaker. I, you know. Yeah. So you guys are helping make my dreams possible. So we need to dream big. Um, what is his name? He's my favorite. Elder Holland. Like one of my all-time He's the man, okay? And he said um, that the Lord is anxiously waiting to answer your prayers, but he can't if you don't dream. He can't if you don't pray, and he can't if you don't believe. So, sorry that's not one of the quotes I have but listed, but it's good, and it's true. But part of being the plans, the believing part is plan on being surprised. And that's the part where we have to let the Lord be involved in our lives, okay? And this doesn't sound like anything it has to do with sunshine, right? Because we're talking about being a happy ray of sunshine. You're like, Ashley, this has nothing to do with the sun. The scripture has all to do with the sun, okay? I'm sure you were all reading Joshua last night. Just kidding. Um, so this is the story of Joshua. He's Joshua in the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. Ring a bell? That's that guy. Okay, different story. So... The children of Israel, they are going to war, okay, against a lot of people, and they're terrified. And so they go to Joshua, he's pretty awesome, and they go, Joshua, we need the Lord's help, 
okay, in this battle where they're fighting and they're going to die, okay? So Joshua goes to the Lord, and the Lord says, I will fight your battles. And in the battle, this is the cool part, ready? They keep fighting. There's, like, hail that comes from heaven that, like, kills their enemies. And while they're fighting, the Lord makes the sun stand still so they can keep fighting and destroy their enemies. So, in our lives, when we go to the Lord and let Him be in charge, He will make the sun stand still in your own life if we're willing to ask for it. Okay? So, that's the important part. Go home and read it. It's exciting. Okay? Because life rarely goes exactly according to plan for anyone. Heavenly Father has a mission and a plan for each of us, um, but He also has His own timetable. One of the hardest challenges in this life is to have faith in the Lord's timing. We need to teach our daughters to aim for the ideal, but to plan for contingencies. And this is Sister Bonnie L. Oscarson, and she is the Young Women General President. She's way cool. So, life, this is so true. So, I thought I would give you a great example, which is my life. This is me, about two and a half years. This is according to my Instagrams, because this is how I document my life. Um, this is me about two and a half years ago, because my plan is I am going to law school. Right? Can you see me? I'm going to be legally blonde when I grow up. Just kidding. Didn't work. Well, here, you got to hear the story, okay? So, I am studying my brains out because I'm graduating from ASU. See the crayon sticking out of my hair? Because I'm not sleeping, I'm only studying. So this is my life because I'm going to law school and it's great. And it wasn't always my plan, but I chatted up with the Lord and the Lord said, law school's for you. And so I came to terms with it. I'm like, cool, I can be a lawyer. I'm excited, right? And then after I take the test that's supposed to kill you to go to law school, um, the Lord says, no, we're going on a mission. Surprise! I'm being surprised. The Lord says it's time to go on a mission. And you have to know, my whole life, I wanted to be a missionary. <laughs> right? This is my dream for years. I'm saying, dear Lord, I so want to be a missionary. I will go anywhere you want to go. I will speak any language you want me to speak, specifically Italian because I want to go to Italy. But I will go anywhere. Please let me go. And he says, no, law school. So now it's surprise. It's time to go on a mission. So he said go, specifically during October conference in President Monson's talk. Okay, I'm sitting there and it was, now is the time. Put your papers in. And I'm like, now? Now, okay, because I'm going to go for it if you say yes, and he did, so I did, and two weeks later, I had everything in, okay, and I'm going, and I was so excited, I was bribing the mailman to get my letter sooner, okay, it says, dear Mr. Mailman, thank you so much for being so efficient in getting our mail to our house, I'm waiting for my missionary call, um, it should come in the mail today, it's very important to me, it should arrive tomorrow. It will be in a very large white envelope addressed to Sister Ashley Tucker from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and I have a tiny request that if it comes tomorrow, could you please drop it off sooner on your route, if not terribly inconvenient. Ashley Tucker, P.S., I hope you like cookies. P.S., this is what it looks like, okay? I am so excited. I get called to Raleigh, North Carolina, English-speaking, to leave on January 16, 2013. <laughs> are coming true. Surprise! I'm not going on a mission. I'm getting married, okay? Whoa, curveball, okay? No one saw it coming, not even me or him, okay? We'd been dating the whole time, but it was always, we can do this, whatever this is that we're doing, but I'm leaving. I'm going on a mission because I already got an answer, okay? I'm not. I'm, I'm getting married, so... I opened it in November, in December 24th. I told them I would stay. December 31st, we got engaged. And on April 5th, 2013, we got married. Yeah. Right? And 
he's a catch. I love him. Okay? Surprise. Okay? And then it's been two years, and we're still happy, and we still like each other. Okay? This is my life. But do you think that maybe I did it wrong, like I wasn't supposed to apply to, to do the law school thing and then to do the mission thing and then to get the married thing because I had, I had prayed and I got answers and I was directed and I was surprised the whole time. Ask any member of my family, okay? No, I did it the right way. I did what you're supposed to do. The Lord's a big fan of surprises, okay? But I needed to do this. Woo, not that far. I needed to do this phase so I could know I can have big goals. I can, I can, I can outstudy almost anybody, okay? I'm really good at learning. I needed to learn that, okay? And I needed to trust the Lord, okay? And I needed to be excited about the gospel. I am pumped, okay? I love the gospel. I love my scriptures, okay? And I... And I needed to let the Lord be in charge, okay? And I needed to go through the temple. That was like the biggest blessing. I got to go through the temple, which is probably the reason I was able to say I won't go on a mission because I got to go to the temple and sit there with my mom and kind of cry about it. And I was like really mad at him because I'm like, but I want to go. But I didn't. And I've never regretted it because I... Went to the Lord. He made the sun stand still in my life. And look how happy I am. Okay? I'm a happy camper. Yeah. Woo! Next one. All of us, no matter what your plan is, God says, not me, God, that you need to plan to be a mother. This is something that all of us should pencil down in our unrealistic, realistic life goals for anything it is. This needs to be one of them. Okay? Everybody say yes. yes. Yeah, this is something we can do and be and we will. Okay, woo. So the next one is we are to be a light to others because what do suns do? They shine, right? The greatest blessings from the sun is what it gives to other people. And we can be that for other people. What's next? I don't remember. Okay, so... In shining for others, this is like my favorite quote, okay? It says, in serving others, we find ourselves, okay? The more we serve our fellow men in appropriate ways, the more substance there is to our souls. And it's easier to find ourselves or who we are when, uh, when we serve because there is so much more of us to find. If you don't, if you struggle with who you are, find someone else to build up. Okay? Then you will know who you are. You are a builder and a shiner. Okay? You can do those things. Yes! Donuts! Right? First of all, they're happy. This one has bacon. Right? Okay. I couldn't... I, I just really liked the pictures. Really, what it came down to. But... I wanted to share some examples of people who are a light to others, okay? So, I know, you can drool a little. Um, in college, I had a friend. Her name is Jessica Hale, okay? Well, it's not anymore. She's married, but Jessica Hale. And in college, I mean, any time I saw her, it was, Hi, Ashley Tucker, I love you, and you're beautiful. I was like, oh, thanks. But every day, I saw her like every day. Okay, every day, anytime. Hi, Ashley Tucker, I love you and you're beautiful. And, you know, sometimes it's like, I don't know how to take that. And then you think, maybe it's kind of, maybe it'll wear off. Because who does that all the time? Jessica Hale does. And so every day, Ashley Tucker, I love you and you're beautiful. And it, she became so endearing to me. And eventually I couldn't help it. It became, hi, Jessica Hale, I love you and you're beautiful. Because... I love Jessica Hale, and she is so beautiful, okay? We, and she does, and it wasn't just me. She did to everybody. Everybody was beautiful, and everybody she loved, and everybody loves Jessica Hale, okay?
okay? We can be that for other people. Please be a Jessica Hale in somebody's life. Um, another great example is any, the Mormon channel has this great video. It's called Lift. Has anybody seen it? Yeah, go home and watch it. It's homework, okay? And it's this video about this lady who she's lost the ability to get, be mobile, so to get in and out of her bed, okay? Yeah, it's good. Um, so in the movie, it talks about how, so she, her board members come and they come help her lift her into bed at night. And they talk about how they start out thinking that they're the sunshine in her life, bringing her into bed every day. And by the end, all they can all talk about is how she is the sunshine in their life and it's a blessing to be able to lift her every day, okay? We can be that for other people. Another example is, okay, so I have this friend named Camille, except for I call her Camel, because that's, is so more endearing. And so I love her. She's the most talented, funny, brilliant, organized, perfect person I know, okay? She's phenomenal. And um, she had been dating a boy for over a year, and they've been engaged for a long time, and they're getting married. I get to be part of her bridal party. I get a cute dress. I'm so excited. And their announcements are going out in about, like, this week, okay? And so, not this week. We're not telling the story. It's in the past. Anyways, so, I'm at home with my mom, and we're about to go somewhere. And we're literally pulling out of the driveway, and I'm in the car with my mom, and I have this thought, you need to go to the temple. I already went to the temple this week. I'm good, but thanks. And I was like, you need to go to the temple. I was like, okay, and like pulling out of the driveway. Mom, I gotta go. And so I like jump out of a rolling car, okay, and I take myself to the temple. And I do baptisms, and I'm like, yay, I'm righteous, you know? There was like nothing there other than, you know, baptisms, yay. Okay, and I'm leaving, and as I'm leaving, Camel walks in. And Camel is distraught. Camel has like puffy eyes and she's just, and there's no ring on her hand. And she is devastated. Can you say heartbroken in a million pieces? And um, um, what did he say? Your friend. Like that. And so I, and she goes and gets dressed and I just sit in the chapel with her. And she says, he, he told me he doesn't want to get married to me anymore. And he didn't give me any reason. And I don't know what to do. So, and so I just sat with her for like an hour and just loved her. And didn't say really anything other than just I could be there for her. And I could be a little tiny baby ray of sunshine in a very, very dark time in her life. And she did the smart thing as she went to the temple because that's where the most light is. Okay? So, and it took about a year, and they didn't get married. That's not the happy end part of the story. And it took about a year for her to put her heart back together. Okay? And during this year, because I got to, I listened and got to be at that one point in her life, over the next year, we called it my camel senses, like Spider-Man, okay? Spider senses. And I would like, just randomly, I'd get this feeling like, you should text Camel on this. Cool, she's my friend. So I would text Camel, hey Camel, I love you, I hope you're having a great day. And they were just like, that, that's it, okay? They were short and brief, and I would be like, cool. And, but then it's like, it's going on a long time, it's like a year, and I'm like, she must think, this must be annoying that I keep texting her these things when I feel, because you should, respond to those, not she shouldn't respond, but we should act on those things, right? So I kept acting, but feeling kind of uncomfortable because I think she might think I'm annoying. And then one day she wrote back and said, thank you so much. You had no idea that every time you sent one, I needed someone to love me right then. I was in a hard place and you have been a, you have been a light for me. Happy news is, She's now married to the greatest guy ever. And I don't have that camel sense anymore, probably because she doesn't need it. She has somebody who loves her. But it was this sunshine ray I got to be for this short period of time. 
And let's see, what's another one? So my adorable husband is in Utah for the summer. So he left in Maine. He'll come home in August. So I'm like home by myself. Um, it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, um, we normally go to the temple together, which is awesome. Highly suggest it, OK? Go to the temple with the person you love. Um, and when you're older and you get, in, you get your endowments, you get to go to the celestial room when you're done, which is cool because it's like this giant family party. So last couple weeks ago, I went to the temple, and there was like all these missionaries going through. So there's like all these family members who are all having this great time. And I am in there at the end, and I don't have anybody. And I'm like, I'm in the temple, and I'm happy. But I just, all I want is a hug. Like all these people are happy, and I don't have Mark, and I just need a hug. And I'm like, but I'm happy because I'm at the temple. I was kind of being a sourpuss. Okay, and so then <laughs> I'm going back down to the lady changing room to get changed, and one of my mom's friends, who I haven't seen in probably like eight years, okay, walked up to me and goes, Ashley, how are you doing? Can I give you a hug? Right? She, Kim Mosley, is a ray of sunshine in my life, and she didn't even know it and answered my little prayer that nobody even knew. I didn't even know it was a prayer. I just wanted a hug. <laughs> okay. Another really cool way we can be a ray of sunshine for other people is indirectly, like social media. Okay. Perfect example, Al Fox. Woo! Right? Oh my gosh, was she like the coolest person ever? She, like she's my hero. She just doesn't know it. Um, so Al Fox is a fabulous example of, on social media, she shares happy things that bless other people's lives. I'm not going to lie, sometimes that scares me, OK? Sometimes it's a little scary to put yourself out there and throw a little gospel around, OK? We can do it together, OK? And we can help put nice things out there, OK? That's what my next slide is, because I can't remember. OK, cool. So <laughs> you can and must be an important part of giving comfort to those who need comfort and being a light to other people, OK? That's our job. We have a whole song about it. It says, the errand of angels is given to women, and this is a blessing. This is a duty as women we claim to do whatsoever is gentle and human to cheer and to bless in humanity's name, OK? That's our job. The Lord defined it, not me, OK? And we're happy about it, OK? What's the next one? Woo! Yes! OK? But if the people we hang out with or the things that we look at are not kind or nice or uplifting, we will get burned, OK? That's clever, right? That was funny, OK? We, and if sometimes we are the people who aren't nice. I don't know what happened. We need to be a little more careful. Because like a sunburn, we normally don't realize it until after the fact, right? You're like, it was a great day, and then suddenly I was pink, and then suddenly I was a tomato. OK? <laughs> we have to be careful. And not just the people we associate with, or the people we follow on social media, the people we follow, do they put nice things up? Right? Or the TV shows we watch. Whoa. OK, here's an example. So I don't watch a lot of TV. I was telling someone earlier, I don't have a TV. I got boots in my armoire, OK? There's just shoes. Um, <laughs> so me and Mark, we went to our friend's house, and they were already watching TV. So we sit down to watch whatever they're watching, right? And they're watching, you might have heard of it, it's called Gossip Girl. They're watching this TV show, and I've never seen it before, and I'm, I'm not recommending it. Um, they are mean and hateful and lying and deceitful and backbiting and cruel, and any other unflattering adjective you can think of, that's the only thing this TV show is about. And so then our friend, she goes out of the room for a minute, and Mark sitting at the couch with me, and he looks over me and goes, are girls really this mean? 
And sadly, I look over to him and I say, well, they can't make this stuff up. Okay? We can be, and that's not a flattering quality, okay? We have to be the nice people, okay? And we're supposed to look after things that are lovely, of good report, or praiseworthy, okay? We seek after these things. And sometimes we have to do a reality check of our TV shows and what we're following and who we're with and who we are, okay? Choose good adjectives. Grammar saves lives. Okay, so we should throw kindness around like confetti. Sound good? So, the next one is, so, let your light shine, ladies. Deal? Go back? Okay, we're back. We're good? Cool, cool. Okay, so, ready? Let's shine, we're good. Okay, so the next one is the Son of God who is the ultimate source of light and truth and happiness and goodness and all those good adjectives we were talking about, okay? And God cares about you. And he will listen and he will answer your personal questions. The answers to your prayers will come in his own way in his own time, and therefore, you need to learn to listen to his voice. And um, he, and often the way he answers our prayers or our questions is through other people. That's part of being the sunshine part of it, okay? And we're light to other people, is that he needs you to be that. He needs you to be a Jessica Hale to someone else's life. And sometimes it comes through other ways. And I have another quick story. We got time for a quick story? Okay, we got five minutes. Cool. Um, so, has everybody seen the Easter pageant? It's great. If you haven't, you should. Okay? I'm a firm lover of it. I've been in it like eight times. And. Um, and um, one of my favorite parts of it was I got to be an angel. So if, if you don't know how the stage works, okay, there's the main stage where everyone's on, and then it's like five stories up is the stage that the angels are on. And at the very, very end, the finale, Jesus, this might ruin this for you, but Jesus goes on a crane and is then lifted up even higher for the finale. So he's up top and there's a spotlight and it's awesome. Yeah, magic. Not really, it's just, you know, lights and cameras in action. But, so, I'm an angel, and I happen to be at that point in my life with the crayons in my hair, and I'm studying, and I'm taking way too many classes because it's the only way I know how to do school, and I have a job, and I have this, all these things, and it's like a breaking point day, okay? I'm an angel, I'm supposed to be happy, and I am like, hovering in the corner away from everyone so no one can see that I'm crying because this is probably like the hardest day of my life and I feel like everything might break because we have those days some days, right? And um, the guy who's playing Jesus that night, because it changes, um, his name is Tyler Maxson and I really love Tyler Maxson, it's amazing. And um, so he's already dressed in white, and he's getting ready to go up and get strapped in and be Jesus and go up. And um, I'm like, corner, okay? And he's coming up the stairs, and he comes right over to me. Like, there's all these angels, and there's me over there. And um, he walks straight over to me, and he puts his arm around me, and he says, hey, you okay? And I'm just thinking, what are you doing over here? You're Jesus. You're sp needs to. And he took the time. Literally, I had Jesus, guys. And he came and put his arm around me and said, are you okay? And that was what I needed. And none of my problems changed, specifically not in the next 15 minutes before the show ended. But I had... All, I had all the peace in the world that I needed, and I could go up and sing, I know he lives, because that's how the show ends. It goes, I know he lives, I know he lives. 
I know he lives, and I know that he will answer your prayers, and I know that he wants to fulfill your dreams, and that we can do that if we shine bright, and we follow these steps, and I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen.